Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Wednesday, the 6th of September, 2023. It's been about a week and a half since the last episode, which means it's been about a week and a half since the last time I've worked on the airplane. Uh, we got most of the leading edges done, but we still need to rivet on the interior ribs. And just as a reminder, I checked with Vans and LP4 pull rivets are approved for these ribs. I needed a couple of different sizes that I didn't already have. And I also needed this handy dandy little wedge tool, which you might recall I borrowed one of these when I was attaching the Z brackets to the fuel tank. So I've got my own now. Um, so today is gonna be about this tool and it's gonna be about this tool and that's it. And thankfully that's all because the rest of the shop is a complete disaster after eight or nine days of doing the build out on my trailer. I just have a wheelbarrow full of random tools sitting behind me to take care of. So without any more delay, um, we'll just fire up the GoPros and get into finally, permanently, completely fastening on the leading edges to these wings. So thanks for being here, episode 100. If you like it, please click it. If you don't, that's okay, but let's build an airplane. Episode 100, so maybe 104, 105 actual uh, work sessions. Uh, simple work today. We've got four interior ribs on each of those leading edges that need to be riveted the rib flange to the main spar. So starting here, um, the first couple, I go kind of slowly trying to work out how to best get those um, LP4 rivets fitted in there. Um, stay tuned towards the end of the video because I do have kind of an amateur tip, uh, a better look at those LP4 rivets and how to select the right size as well as the wedge tool. But coming up here in a second, I'll give you a look at kind of what the wedge tool looks like in action. These um, rib flanges for the main ribs are too close to get in there with the, the nose of the uh, rivet puller. So you use this wedge tool so that the collet or rather the mandrel can come out at, at an angle. Um, and when the rivet puller actuates, it will pull straight down. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't affect the, uh, the, what is it? The shop head of the pulled rivet. It's not pulling it at an angle. So um, it sits at an angle uh, so you can fit it in there. But um, within that tool, that uh, that bit of the mandrel is being pulled straight. Uh, and so when you get them out, you can actually look at them and see that the, when those mandrels break off, each of them um, on the end near where they are broken off, there's a straight section for, uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch and then a little bend in it where, where it was coming out of the tool and being pulled by the rivet puller. Anyways, the first few of these were, for me, um, pretty slow um, because um, well, the LP4 rivets are not smooth like a regular solid rivet. They've got these um, little lines in them, which if you stay tuned toward the end, you'll kind of see what the purpose of those is. But um, yeah, just working to <laughs> two things, working to get those things installed uh, in there, like up there in the hole, and then I forgot, and if you saw at the very beginning of the video, I kind of grabbed two different air hoses for this tool. I forgot that I don't have the right size small fitting for this pneumatic rivet puller to use my nice uh, lightweight um, air hose from from Cleveland. And this larger air hose is a, just a bit more cumbersome to work with. And on this side, um, when I'm working on the which wing is this? The left wing. Yeah, when I'm working on the left wing right here, it's just kind of awkward where that air hose comes out. So uh, it took me a couple of ribs to get into rhythm. And then you'll see at the end of this video, when I get onto the right wing, it's like bang, 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 and it goes super fast. Um, I highly recommend uh, and this is just sort of reiterating a, a, an earlier point uh, from an earlier video. I do highly recommend picking up one of these inexpensive um, rivet pullers from Harbor Freight. Even if you're doing an RV8, uh, which, or RV7, which in theory doesn't have that many 
pulled rivets, um, but there are times when you do get pulled rivets in bunches. And by the way, um, I think I said it at the beginning of the video, th this particular part of the construction doesn't call for pulled rivets. What it does call for is solid rivets and uh, two people with long skinny arms um, to put solid rivets in there. So if you have a rivet buddy or a bucking buddy to work with that you trust, um, you can do these with solid rivets. Um, I'm going to say that you can't do solid rivets here by yourself, but then there's probably somebody out there who managed to do it. But my arms certainly aren't long enough to reach all the way into the middle of that wing. Um, and so, you know, going back to a previous episode, I contacted Vans after looking at Vans Air Force and seeing that many people had used these LP4 rivets here. So I contacted Vans and they said, yep, um, LP4 rivets are approved for this particular application. Um, but the recommendation was that if you could do solid rivets on the inboard and outboard most ribs, um, that would be even better. So that's what I did in the previous episode 99, I suppose. Um, but uh, even if even if you didn't do pull rivets here, there are um, places where you're going to do many. And one place in particular, where the last time we used this wedge tool was installing the Z brackets on the fuel tanks. And not only is it very convenient for that, but think about the fact that when you're working with the fuel tanks and sealant, you're kind of working against time. Um, and so this definitely speeds up the process versus using a manual rivet puller. And it's just not expensive for the amount of value you get out of it. I think that it's like a 35 or $40 tool. Um, and in the beginning I said that I wasn't going to get one and then, uh, another builder talked me into it. I'm glad that they did. Um, so yeah. And then, uh, later on, I think, I think there'll be many more opportunities to use this tool on the wings where the callouts are for pulled rivets and then I'm not there yet and I don't have it on order yet, but I do believe that there are many, many uh, pulled rivets in the fuselage construction. So I'll be happy that I have it. Um, this is what I was talking about. I move into the right wing and my tempo uh, kind of picks up dramatically once I've kind of got a rhythm. Um, yeah. Uh, I explained it in the end, uh, but I'll, I guess maybe I'll help, uh, help you understand it right here. When you're using that, um, that wedge tool, it's very, it's actually a clever tool to have, even if you're not using it for this purpose for a wedge tool. But if you've got a difficult hole that you're trying to put a, um, a pulled rivet in, you can use the wedge tool to get it installed because you get some leverage with that thing rather than just with your fingers trying to, um, put a rivet up into a hole. But anyways, um, in order to get the, um, the collet of the rivet puller over the mandrel, when it's so close to the, to the, uh, the adjacent main rib, you have to give it a little bend, you know, put the, put the, the rivet tool over the rivet and then just give the mandrel a little bit of a bend, not much, just enough that you can get the collet started on it. And then you can ride the the, the mandrel all the way up until it's seated, hold the tool flush, pull the trigger, boom, it's done. It's very simple. So I think that uh, here in just a few moments, um, my cameras will die on me. Um, I knew this was going to be a quick work session, just about an hour, um, but the batteries just don't uh, last very long in the heat. So I've got an amateur tip coming up for you here in a couple of seconds. But before that happens, just uh, thanks again for being here for 100 episodes. Uh, I wish I could say it wasn't going to be hundreds more, <laughs> but it definitely is. So uh, a like and subscribe would be fantastic, and I always appreciate your feedback. So amateur tip coming your way, um, and I'll talk to you coming up in uh, 101 very soon. So here's the amateur tip. Hey, quick amateur tip on the way out. The uh, GoPro's overheated with three rivets to go. So I'm done. They're all fastened on. LP4 um, pull rivets. They have s some little marks. Can you see them right there? Here and here. 
If you want to make sure that you have the right length of rivet, you just have to make sure that that top mark is exposed once it's inserted in the hole that it's going to go. If the bottom mark is exposed, then the rivet is too long. So you're just trying to hit in between those two spots if you're trying to figure out the correct length. Using the wedge tool, you can see it's got a little funky angle on it so that if you have a rivet inserted in it, when the rivet is, when the mandrel is straight, the gun can come in at an angle and you don't have to bend the mandrel. You only have to put enough bend in it that you can get the collet of the, the rivet puller over it. And then as it goes up, just hold the, hold the tool flush. And what will happen is the mandrel will be bent above the tool, but inside the tool, it will be pulling straight. So you still, it still sets properly. One more amateur tip. If you get one of these um, pneumatic rivet pullers, which I love, I'm so glad I got this and it was really inexpensive at Harbor Freight. You have this little thing to catch the, uh, the mandrel. Just make sure that this little slot <laughs> is facing up. Otherwise, uh, you'll be like me and every time you pull one, these things will all just fall on the floor. So just make sure that it's facing up. That's it for episode 100. We'll see you on the next one.